Hi, how are you? How are you doing today? What's the weather like where you are? Actually, tell me where you're tuning in from. Um, if you're in the south, I'm going to be super jealous because um, I'm in Canada. If you don't know me, my name is Melissa. I am from um, Ontario, Canada. So it's typically quite cold here in the winter. Um, and, you know, I wanted to... I actually watched a friend talk about a little bit about her journey earlier and it inspired me to go live and talk about a piece of my journey that I haven't really spoken about. Uh, so I'm going to go over that a little bit with you. I do struggle with timelines and things because I do have PTSD so I may jump around a bit so I apologize for that. But I'd like to tell you a little bit about a time I was put on some medication that literally nearly killed me. Um, I I grew up in a very difficult uh, childhood, um, no support, uh, no guidance, um, love was not really a word that you heard very often in my house. Uh, we lived in poverty for the most part um, and there was a lot of abuse and drug abuse, alcohol abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse, you name it. Um, so, you know, when I grew up, uh, I thought that the way I felt was normal. I thought that feeling scared and sad all the time was normal. And I didn't have the best role model to teach me otherwise because my mother also uh, had depression very badly, anxiety very badly, PTSD from her childhood and her marriage. So... I didn't really see anything other than um, what I lived with. And so growing up, um, feeling that way and thinking that was normal was, was tough because, um, you know, you wonder if everyone else is feeling the same way, but it's also not something that you can't, you can, re you could really talk about, especially back then. But even now there's such a stigma around mental health that, uh, people are afraid to tell someone else that they don't feel good. And, um, you know, I've made it my mission to help people out of that darkness and into the light and to feel better and without feeling like they're different or weird or anything like that. And I can tell you, um, when I was 15, actually when I was 14, I met someone. And uh, by the time I was 15, I was pregnant. And I moved out of... Um, I moved out of my parents' home, and uh, I had her when I was 16. So I also had a rough time in my relationship. There was a lot of abuse in my relationship as well, uh, not just from him, but also from his uh, family. And so fast forward a couple of years, I'm now 18 with a two-year-old, and the feelings were just getting worse. Um, the sadness was just getting worse and the feeling useless was getting worse and feeling unworthy was getting worse. All those things were getting worse. And so <clears throat> I went to see a therapist, a psychiatrist at 18 and I was diagnosed with severe depression, anxiety, uh, and PTSD. And so he prescribed me a medication and I, in a way, I was kind of excited because I thought that I would take this medication and things would be all better. I was young. I was 18. I didn't really know any better. Uh, and I thought, well, I'm just going to take this medication and everything's going to be fine. Everything's going to be great. A doctor, like he knows what he's talking about, right? So I started taking this medication at 18. Um, in fact, it was Prozac that I was taking. And... Um, it didn't actually help. It actually made things worse. It wasn't just a sadness anymore. I had this anger inside me. I had this resentment inside me. And I had this um, urge to not want to be here anymore. And it was a real urge. It was an urge that I had to um, really fight, you know, and I had uh, a young daughter. So I think that uh, the fact that I had a young daughter probably saved my life because otherwise it, it would be very, very hard to push back that urge. And 
you know, there are a lot of people in the world that are struggling with mental health and struggling with suicidal thoughts and all of these things. And, you know, I, if you ever need to talk, please reach out to me. I know what it's like to feel alone. I know what it's like to be confused. And um, I just, I really, I know what it's like. I've, I've, you know, been back and forth in the mental health struggle for a long, long, long time. And I wasn't sure about talking to the doctor about that because I felt like he was going to think that uh, I was crazy because <laughs> this medication was supposed to help, right? So I felt like if I go to him and tell him that this medication is making me want to kill myself, that he's just going to think I'm crazy and admit me in a hospital. Uh, when in fact, I didn't have these major suicidal urges before this medication. So uh, I took it upon myself not to take it anymore. And I don't recommend doing that. That's not something that um, I would recommend. Always talk to your physician. I just had a massive fear and I didn't. And that would be the anxiety in me. Please, 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 if you're having... Um, you know, different reactions with your medications or, you know, you're not feeling any better, please, please talk with your physician. Um, so I stopped taking the Prozac and the suicidal thoughts started to diminish. They went away, which um, was great because that was such an incredible struggle, um, you know, within inside me to push those deep urges away. And uh, I also had a huge fear of losing my daughter because I thought if I went to the doctor and told him that I was having suicidal urges that they would take her. So I didn't talk about that. And I've never talked about that. Nobody knows about that. Uh, this is the first time I am talking about it because uh, I want to help. I want to help people out there that feel the same. I want to help young mothers who maybe maybe are struggling with uh PPD, maybe you're struggling with postpartum depression, maybe you're struggling with, you know, any sort of mental health issue. And I want to bring light to the fact that it's okay. It, it's, it's okay. It's okay to struggle. And it's okay to feel bad sometimes. And that doesn't make you a bad person. I promise. And there is help out there and there are people that care, even if in your immediate circle, it doesn't feel that way. And when I was young, um, I didn't have a circle and, you know, <laughs> the way I lived, the people around me made sure that I didn't have friends. Uh, so I didn't have anyone to talk to. And I know, I know that's tough. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I built a community within my team and we are so supportive and uplifting of one another now that um, I finally know what it's like to have a circle and a community that cares. And it's incredible. And you deserve that too. And if you need someone to talk to, please reach out to me. Um, so the suicidal thoughts uh, diminished. And I'm not saying I was happy because <laughs> I wasn't. I still lived with depression, anxiety, PTSD, all the things, and I still really, really struggled with all of that. And um, the fact that I could have children and be so sad, the fact that I didn't want to get out of bed, the fact that I did the least amount possible because I just couldn't, I just didn't feel like doing anything. I didn't feel like getting dressed. I didn't feel like brushing my hair. I didn't feel like, um, I didn't feel like doing anything, nothing. And I'm sure there are one or two of you that can relate with that. Maybe you can relate with that. Uh, so I lived many, many, many years struggling with the depression, anxiety, and, and so on without medication because my mother had made me, she didn't make me, she lightly pushed me, I guess, to go back and see this psychiatrist. And when I spoke to him, his answer to me was, we will just keep prescribing different medications until we find the one that works. So, so I'm to be a guinea pig for the pharmaceutical world. And maybe 
there will be one that I actually can't push back the urges of suicide. Maybe one would work. I'm not willing to take that chance when I have children to take something where I might not want to wake up the next day. So I refused. I refused to do that. I refused to be a guinea pig to 20 different medications to find one that might work. You know, not to mention just the suicidal thoughts. I gained a lot of weight <laughs> on those medications, um, on that medication, Prozac. And I just, it just overall wasn't, wasn't a good feeling. And I didn't want to put myself in that situation again. So I refused. I refused the medication. Right or wrong, I don't know. I don't know if it was the right thing to do or not. Maybe it wasn't the right thing to do. And I'm not telling you that you should do that. I'm telling you what I did. And I told him no. So I lived years and years and years with the struggle of depression, and anxiety, and um, it's not it's not easy. And if you're doing that right now, I know it's not easy, and I understand that struggle. And you're not alone. Um, but then I lost my mom. I lost my mom at 60 to cancer. She lived only four months, and my entire life was turned upside down. And those thoughts came back, only this time they were my own, not medically induced, not, you know, induced by medication. They were my own. I didn't think I wanted to be here anymore. I didn't think anyone cared. I didn't think that life was worth living because we're just going to die anyway. That was my thought. And I had a lot of regrets from losing my mother and... Uh, they were really, really hard to live with, really hard to live with. And nobody knew that I was going through that. I'm very, very good at putting on a fake smile and being there for people and always trying to be uplifting and supportive and all the things, um, but not for myself. And someone had reached out to me about a company and I wanted nothing to do with it. I wasn't open. <laughs> I didn't want to hear anything about it. I had so much going on. And like I said, I barely wanted to even live, let alone do anything else. So I ended up paying to be part of this so that she can make a few bucks because I care about everybody. Um, and I want, you know, I want the best for everyone. So that's how it all started. I paid to be a part of it. And this stuff showed up in the mail. And I wasn't even going to try it. Because back then, it, you know, all we had was coffee. And I hate coffee. I still hate coffee. Uh, so it's a little, a little ironic. But I, I still hate coffee. So this stuff came in the mail. And my husband started making it and putting it in a cup with um, hot chocolate in like a thermos um, that I could bring to work. And I started drinking this stuff and not paying attention to anything. Until a coworker at work, uh, one of the other managers says to me, why the hell are you so happy? Keep in mind, I had just lost my mom not long ago and people around me were kind of used to seeing me down, um, kind of used to seeing me not so patient, not so, um, I don't know how I can put it, but you probably understand. Uh, the people around me were used to that. So <clears throat> they noticed even before I did. He asked me, why are you so happy? And I said, what do you mean? He says, you're literally smiling all the time. You're whistling. You're humming. You're, you know, getting through your work like nothing. Like, you know, like you enjoy it. He says, it's almost like you're enjoying being at work. He says, it's a little weird. And I said, well, first of all, isn't that a good thing <laughs> to enjoy being here and enjoy being alive? And I started to think, I'm enjoying being alive. I'm enjoying being alive. What in the world is happening? What is happening? I get home, I'm talking to my husband and he says, yeah, he says, you know, you, you are happier. And he says, and you're getting up earlier because before... I would get up basically at the time that I had to, to go to work. That's it. Because I didn't want to get out of bed. 
Now, I was getting up 6, 6.30 in the morning, smile on my face, greeting the family, happy to be out of bed, happy to be awake, happy to be alive. And that's not something that I was used to feeling. <clears throat> so when I started to think about it, I thought, you know what, you're so right. Instead of my, like gritting my teeth, driving to work, angry, not wanting to go to work, upset at every person driving on the road, I'm smiling, I'm happy, I'm waving at people. What? I was blown away. <clears throat> blown away. These plants, basically plants, are doing for me what doctors couldn't do. And I was feeling incredible after a while. And sometimes, sometimes I cry <laughs> because I went so many years without that. I went so many years feeling so terrible, hating myself, having zero self-confidence, feeling like I didn't want to be here. And literally it took a blend of plants to make me feel great again. It's mind blowing. It really is mind blowing. And um, at the end of the day, because I was feeling happier, because I wasn't drowning my sorrows in sugar and carbs, because we do that, we stress eat, we emotionally eat, I stopped drowning my sorrows in sugar and carbs. I started feeling happy again. I started going for walks with the family. I started traveling the dang world. This is someone who wouldn't even go to the grocery store alone. Now I'm traveling the world. Who the heck is this person? This person is me. This is the person that I actually am. This is the person that was trying to come out all along. This is the person that fought the suicidal thoughts. Because I knew deep down inside that wasn't me. I am not saying this is a cure. I am not saying this is a cure. This helped me see past the misery. This helped me understand that I'm worth it. This helped me understand that my life matters. This helped to show me that waking up in the morning, I should be thankful for that. This really, really, I'm telling you, gives me hope. It gives me hope for others. And that is why I wanted to go live today is because I know you are suffering. I know you feel some of the same things that I did or maybe even all of it. And one thing I do know for 100% sure, you won't know if this is for you unless you try. That's all I ask, is that you try. Because you're worth it. You truly are. And my mission is to keep spreading this word as far reach as I can. So that people understand that they are worth it. And to surround yourself with people that show you that every single day. It will make a world of difference. It will. I really appreciate you spending this time with me and listening to my story. If you think that anyone uh, would get some value from this, please share this with them. Tag them on here. Share it to your Facebook, whatever you'd like to do. Let's spread the word. Let's take the stigma away from mental health and understand that we're all worth it. Everyone deserves to be happy.